Hey guys, Chauncey Phillips here with my October 17th DVD update. Where I talk about the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last two weeks or so. Like I always say guys, if you enjoy these updates, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Leave me comments below what you guys thought of the titles I checked out this update. Any titles coming up you guys would like me to review for future updates and some of the stuff you guys have checked out recently. Now the first one I got from Shout Factory's, you know, Scream Factory line is the brand new collector's edition of Army of Darkness. And this is a very cool edition because it has on here uh, the theatrical version. Because, you know, this has been out on Blu-ray before, but only in the theatrical version with, like, no features at all except, like, one little uh, featurette thing. It has the director's cut and the international cut. The director's cut, I think there's, like, some stuff saying where he doesn't always, uh, you know, Sam Raimi doesn't say it's technically his total director's cut, but he likes certain things about it, and still there's other things about it that he doesn't like about it. Uh, the international cut, though, is basically pieces of the the um, you know the director's cut and the normal cut kind of cut together, and then some different stuff for the international version. The, the international, though, is the one that I watch because it's the brand new uh, 4K transfer for the movie, and it was really, really, really good transfer. Like, one, like I would say one of Shop Factory's like top-notch best transfers I've seen. Like, looked amazing. You know, if you guys haven't seen the movie, the basic Basically, it's the third Evil Dead film, you know, and it's, you know, uh, Bruce Campbell's character, Ash, and in this one, he's transported through the, you know, the, kind of like the wormhole it, back in time to the medieval era, and it's kind of him there, you know, with his, you know, uh, uh, chainsaw arm and his boomstick, his gun, he's kind of sort of trapped there, and he has to sort of figure out how he's going to get back to his own world, and he has to find the Necronomicon, and go on this quest to try and find it, and the people there that are, that are you know, the uh, medieval knights and things like that are kind of saying to him, you know, you have to do it this way, you have to say this in specific spell to get the book, otherwise if you don't say the spell wrong, things go wrong. Of course he says the spell wrong, and then he ends up bringing back the Army of the Dead, and that's pretty much where the movie really picks up, is when the Army of Dead come after everybody and start killing everybody, and it's all done, you know, classic, uh, stop-motion, kind of, a real, co like, really cool, like, throwback effects, so it was even throwback effects for the time when they did this, and it has on here a brand new uh, making of documentary, which is like an hour, I think 40 minutes long, it's actually longer than the movie, and it gets pretty much, I think it has like 20... Some oh, over 20 different interviews, you know, and they even get people like I totally forgot were in the movie, like Bill Mosley, uh, a bunch of different people. Bruce Campbell talks on it, Ted Raimi, and it's basically just talking about the whole making of the movie. It has on here, too, uh, the television version of the movie, which is kind of cool to see it. You know, it's in full screen, but it's like the way it airs on TV because, you know, TV versions always have like different stuff and kind of lines changed out be kind of cool if uh, more movies started doing that because I always remember certain movies have kind of cool TV versions like Summer Rental has some extra scenes the movie Clifford has like a whole different scene with him showing when he gets these headphones and stuff there's I don't know I, I like that they kind of included all this stuff it's a great addition it's definitely you know totally worth upgrading for and I love you know the uh, new artwork for that uh, the next one is Tales from the Crypt Presents Demon Knight, and uh, I'm going to talk about the second, the sequel as well. Um, and the, the basically, if you guys haven't seen the Tales from the Crypt Demon Knights, you know, it's the Tales from the Crypt show that was on HBO, and these were the movies of them. And, you know, the show on HBO was pretty, you know, R-rated as well, but this kind of is a little bit more on the level with uh, gore and things like that. And it's basically, this is about Billy Zane's character, who is going after William Sadler's character, who has this key that he wants, and he needs the key, and uh, it kind of because Billy Zane's character is like the devil himself and he brings these kind of demons with him and William Sadler's character goes and hides out in this old kind of run down uh, kind of apartment building kind of hotel mix kind of place where people kind of live for cheap and uh, that's kind of what, what, basically what it is and then he goes in there hiding out and Billy Zane comes there and unleashes all these demons that want to get inside the house and start possessing people and killing people and all kinds of stuff, you know, starts happening to them. Really cool, fun, you know, crazy effects and things like that. And to me, I think this is one of my favorite Billy Zane movies. You know, Billy Zane does a lot of kind of weird stuff. And I think this is his best movie. And of course, you know, Titanic was his biggest movie. But this was his most fun movie. And like when I think of Billy Zane, this is always the movie I think of. And, um... 
you know, always a fan too of William Sadler, who has, you know, played Death and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. This has on here too an audio commentary, uh, you know, and uh, the making of the movie, and has a bunch of, you know, interviews with um, Billy Zane, William Sadler, uh, a whole bunch of different people, you know, behind the scenes. But this is a very, very cool movie. I forgot too how much Dick Miller was in this movie. Uh, and the sequel too, uh, Bordello of Blood. And I know this isn't like, and it's like not as good of a movie and like a filmmaking standpoint and all the aspects of like a movie but for some reason this is the one that I really have more fun with watching I don't know why but I've always really liked this one I didn't even see this one until like maybe like eight years ago or something for some reason I didn't see this one for a long time and maybe I like it because Corey Feldman is in this one but for some reason I always really like this one I know it's not a better movie like I said than um, Demon Knight but this one is, you know, Tales from the Crypt, Bordello of Blood, and has a new cover on this one as well. Like I said, also, the transfer on both of these is, are great. This has on here a making of as well. And this one is basically about this brothel. Uh, in the beginning of the movie, this um, the, they find this old tomb with the vampire woman in it, and they bring her back, and she kind of, like, takes over this brothel. And people kind of go in there thinking they're going to go and sleep with these women. And it's a whole brothel of vampires, and it's all... You know, it's it kind of hidden in a, uh, you know, funeral parlor and people kind of go in there and get, you know, basically killed by the vampire women. And um, Corey Feldman's, you know, character and his friends end up kind of wandering into this place at, at night because this guy in the bar is like, oh, you like women? Oh, they, and they all get, you know, they get taken there and Corey Feldman's character goes missing and it's his sister, you know, hiring Dennis Miller's character who's a private investigator to try and find him and figure out where he is. And of course he tracks him down to this place and kind of what he discovers there. I don't know, it's just, I, to me it's a really, really fun movie. Um, both of them are really good, but this one, I always have like such fun, a fun time watching this one. Uh, the next one is The Human Centipede, The Complete Sequence, which is all the Human Centipede films together. Uh, they're releasing the third movie as well separately. Um, but this has new stuff on here, though. It has a um, The Ladies of the Human Centipede, which is new interviews with Ashley C. Williams, uh, Ashley Yenny, um, and I believe the other new thing on here is a you can actually watch on The Human Centipede 2 the color version of the movie. So it's pretty cool that you can actually see you know the movie in color. You know, here's a look at the discs too, the actual disc art for the movies. But you know, you, like I said, you can actually watch them see it in color. It's actually kind of cool to see it because they actually shot it in color but then, you know, put it in black and white. But I like the kind of effect that the black and white kind of gave to the movie. But if you haven't seen the movies, the first movie is about this crazy doctor who has this kind of like thing that he really wants to do is to make a centipede of sewing people together and he ends up getting these people, sewing them together into the centipede of three people and it's kind of what happens. The second one is this guy who is, you know, Martin and he's, uh, you know, in this version, uh, in, the, in this world, the human centipede is actually a movie, and he's a fan of the movie. And I like the idea that he wants to emulate and make the centipede himself. And it's kind of that idea, too, when people go, oh, horror movies make people go crazy and make people do bad things and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, oh, that does that to him and makes him want to make his own centipede and kidnapping all these people and socking them over the head and things like that. It's a crazy movie. I, the second one, to me, is my favorite one to watch, but it's really, really twisted and goes really far with things. The third one... I don't absolutely love the third one as much as the other ones. Just on some production standpoints and things like that. It's basically, though, set in a prison. And, they're, um, you know, the characters in there are playing different characters. It's kind of like, you know, Return of the Dead 2. It's like the same people, but playing different characters in it. And in this one... It's a prison. The prisoner is real overpopulated, and the warden is really crazy. And he's played play super over the top. And he's like, I can't stay in this place. And he's like screaming. All of his lines are screamed like at the top of his lungs the whole time. But it gets kind of crazy, some of it. But he wants to sew the people together, the prisoners together, and makes the centipede. It, it's a very, very crazy movie. He has on here, though, a commentary on that one, alternate ending, deleted scenes, and a making of featurette. But it's a cool set, too, like I said, too, to get the new features and actually to see part two, you know, in color. Uh, the next one from uh, Screen Factory, as well, is the Larry Fesserden collection, which is uh, four of his movies. And it has on here, No Telling. Um, when Digo Habit in the Last Winter, no telling, it's kind of about this guy who's doing experiments on animals and things start to go pretty bad about what he's doing. Uh, when Digo 
I always forget too the kid that from um, Malcolm Middle who plays Dewey, you know, is in that one. And it's kind of about this um, kid who ends up, um, you know, his, fa his dad ends up hitting this deer, and then it, they, you know, because they're going out to the middle of their cabin for a trip, and kind of things start to go weird out there, and there's all these kind of weird visuals and things like that. Habit's kind of a vampire love story, and The Last Winter is one that I remember liking a lot, which is kind of about these, these group of people drilling, drill, drilling oil out in the middle of like um, the desert, I mean, out of the middle of like an Alaska kind of place, and weird things start to happen with the oil, and the, they, they kind of have weird visions, and people start dying off and stuff like that out there. But it has on here tons of different features, and has in here new transfers on all of them, commentary tracks by the you know Larry Fessenden and all of them, um, uh, sizzle reels, uh, you know the classic uh, featurettes that were on some of these ones as well. Uh, his short films from um, ABCs of Death Two, um, making a, of N is for Nexus, a whole bunch of different, tons and tons of different features on this one. Like it's a really really great set for lots of different stuff, especially if you're fans of his films. And also has in here a booklet as well, you know, with pictures and things like that, and, you know, uh, antidotes and things like that about the making of the movies. But these are pretty cool, weird, lesser-known ones. The one, like I said, the one that I always remember the most is Wendigo and then The Last Winter. Uh, the next one from Universal, and this I would go and say is one of my favorite movies, 2015, at least one of the ones that I would definitely say would probably be in my list of, you know, the top movies, because I really, really like this movie. I saw this in theaters as well, and it's um, dope. And this is basically about these kids who are in this school, and they kind of don't really fit in. They kind of, their their kind of look and their pop culture, they're all kind of into pop culture and 90s rap and all kinds of, you know, just like, like their looks are all nice, but they like kind of new music as well, but they don't really fit into the school, and the one kid has a high top, you know, kind of like kid and play, and he, they, he, they just kind of don't fit in at all at their school whatsoever, and the one night they're at this party, and this guy ends up hiding drugs in his bag, and the whole thing becomes a mess because, like, he hid the drugs in the bag, and then um, people are kind of coming after him. One guy's, like, saying if he sells the drugs, he's going to get killed. The other guy's saying if you don't sell the drugs, they're going to come after him. So, like, it kind of puts him in this predicament. He's not, like, knowing what to do with his friends and what he's going to do with these drugs and how he's going to kind of rectify this situation. Um, and that's essentially what the movie is. It has on here, too, um, some featurettes on the movie. But he has a whole bunch of people on this too. You know, Pharrell Williams was the producer of this film. Uh, Zoe Kravitz is in this movie. Uh, tons of different rappers like Tiger and Tiger and uh, you know ASAP Rocky. But a really, really, really well-made movie. Really fun movie too, and kind of has like a '90s vibe to the movie too. But very you know current and hip as well. Uh, the next one from uh, Sony is, you know, the new Adam Sandler movie, Pixels. And, you know, Adam Sandler always kind of gets, like, uh, a bad rap and things like that. And this thing is, like, when it comes to Adam Sandler movies, I, I like the cover on this one, though. You kind of always know what you're in for. They always kind of have a similar kind of vibe. He always has his friends, and then they always have a kind of similar kind of sense of humor to them, like kind of a weird, strange humor to them. I always kind of like them. This one, though, wasn't his greatest, though. Like, I sometimes like the ones that people really hate, like Jack and Jill. I really like that. I know it's not a great movie, but it's just kind of fun to watch. This one, though, is about a group of these kids in the beginning of the movie where at this video game championship, and years later, these aliens kind of intersected these messages that they sent, uh, video games and things like that, and kind of thought that they were like a threat to them. So the aliens ended up making these the, like the characters from the video games and sent them to Earth to kind of kill people and, you know, kind of take over the world, and they have to kind of get together the old characters you know, in the beginning of the movie who were the gamers you know, in this competition and kind of go out and try and figure out how they're going to stop and kill all these aliens. And, and they think that they're the best people to kill these, you know, the uh, game characters because they were, you know, obsessed with these old games. So especially, too, if you like old video games and things like that, I think you really like this. It has on here, though, you know, making of the, the movie, um, uh, a bunch of different stuff on here. Uh, music video and things like that, but I, I like I said, it's not an amazing movie, but it, it for what it is, I thought it was a fun thing. Uh, the next one, and I originally thought that this was the original movie. I didn't even realize that this was a sequel until like a couple days ago. I originally thought this was you know the Molly Hartley just an unrated cut of the movie, and I don't even remember if I saw the Molly Hartley one. Um, I, I don't really don't remember if I did. It came out in two thousand and eight, and this is the Exorcism of Molly Hartley, and this is the unrated one. This is from Fox. And this is, like, 
it kind of takes from a lot of different movies. Like, it's, it's one sequence, too, that's so much like The Omen. It was, like, crazy. And it's, it's and a lot of stuff is like other movies with this movie. But it's basically all about, um, you know, Devin Sawa's character, who's this priest, and that he does this exorcism that goes terribly wrong. And the priest and the woman that he's exercising end up, like, jumping out of the window and dying. And he ends up getting put in the insane asylum because they kind of think he's nuts for what he says happened. And then it's the Molly Hartley character from the first movie. Like I said, I, I don't even remember the first one. I, I don't remember if I saw it. I, I, I think it had. I think I might have saw it. I don't even remember. Like I said, but she's basically it's her character again, and she ends up getting possessed because she goes sleeping with this couple. She kind of has this three way with them, and then they end. Up, she kind of blacks out, and then they end up or they're dead in the bathtub. And, the, you know, the police are there and discover them. So she gets put in the insane asylum. And she, when she gets there, people start doing weird things. They start banging their heads on the wall, start acting really strange. Which, you know, as soon as she got there, all this stuff starts to happen. And then, you know, Devin Sawa's character, who's the priest, who's, like, been kicked out of being a priest and he can't even do exorcisms and stuff anymore, he has to kind of exercise her. I don't know. I mean, like I said, it's, it's very cliche with some of this stuff and things like that. But it's not horrible or anything like that. I, it, it really isn't. It is kind of a strange, like see, like I said, because I don't think people are going to remember the first one that much. Because I don't th think they remember, the first one was one people really remembered too much. But it has one here, you know, um, director's diaries, uh, security camera footage, and beyond the truth of exorcisms. And like I said, it's a fun, like, silly movie. Nothing, like, amazing or anything like that. Uh, the next one from Disney is Tomorrowland. And, you know, this was... I, I I liked parts of this and didn't like aspects of it. it I didn't think that, you know, because I, I, I really like Disney, go to Disney a lot, and I liked parts of it. I kind of wish, though, there was a little bit more with the Tomorrowland aspects than there was in the movie. The movie's basically, though, about, um, what's that actress's name? It's, um, you know, Britt Robinson, and, you know, she kind of is going to jail for some reason or another, and she's, for, I can't totally forgot what she did, but she ends up going to jail. When she's there getting her, you know, belongings back, she ends up, there's this pin that's in the thing with her, and she keeps going, up the pan, my pan, and the pin, and she touches the pan, then she ends up getting transported to the Tomorrowland world, and she doesn't really know what this world is and why she's touching the thing. She ends up getting transported there, and she ends up coming across, you know, George Clooney's character, and he kind of knows the land, the place as well, and then they kind of end up going back to Tomorrowland, and there's kind of all these kind of things that sort of go wrong, and there's this, and then the kind of love interest of George Clooney, when you think about it, it's kind of strange. I'm not going to say who it was. It's just kind of strange. I mean, like, I don't know, it just comes across really kind of weird a little bit. I mean, I think a lot of people notice that. It's not terrible or anything like that. I, I liked it. I, it's definitely something that I could watch again and things like that, and it has a cool, like, uh, Tomorrowland feel, but like I said, I wish there was a little bit more to it. You saw a little bit more of Tomorrowland, the world, before it went to pot, because like in the, in the movie, you know, the world went to pot, and things went bad there, and you don't exactly know, and you kind of find out little by little what happened. Um, it has on here, though, a bunch of different featurettes on casting, animated short, um, but I, like I said, you know, delete scenes as well. Uh, the next one from Lion's Gate is uh, um, Obsession. Um, Obsessions? I think that's how you say it. I, I always pronounce things incorrect, but it says, become, you know, part of mankind's last hope. And it's just kind of a, about this, this kind of ship that they sent up, this rocket ship up to space, and it's like a giant ship, and it's kind of stuck in the 60s, because they sent it up in the 60s, and they kind of don't even know... That the, that what the year is up there, and they don't even know that the world is, you know, what it is down below. They're just kind of sent on this mission, but then ends up being this murder, you know, someone ends up dying up there. But then it also cuts back to the creator who's old now, who actually sent this mission up. And, you know, it's never was, like, really publicized. There's kind of these kind of hints and people kind of, you know, kind of rumors and things like that that this mission was sent up there with all these people, but it was never confirmed. No one really knows. And it's kind of them, him and on Earth, and people kind of trying to get information from him about it, and then the people up there. It was, it's a kind of an interesting show. Like I said, it's kind of cool because it's like set in the 60s, I mean, up there in the ship thing, and it's, 
I don't know what I would kind of relate it to. It was, you know, shot for sci-fi. It's like a mini series. I don't know if they're going to do any more of these or not. But it's an interest, interesting concept of a show, though. And the next one from 88 Films is a region free release. Uh, this one, the next one as well is, is as well Splatter University. And this one I had never heard of before in my life. This is Blood Sucking Ferals in Pittsburgh. This is one that Tom Savini did the effects for, and it came out actually like a 90, early 90s movie, and it never has had a release before ever. You know, in the U.S. or I don't know if there was ever a UK DVD of this before or not, but I never had saw like heard of this ever. Like I don't know if this might have played on like Monster Viz or anything like that. But it's basically about these kind of like it's done like kind of like a spoof a little bit of these kind of bumbling cops and the one guy's name is Sweeney, but the way he, the guy said it to him, it always sounds like he's saying Sweetie. And it's these kind of murders that are going on and people's heads are getting cut off and all these teens are getting killed and the cops are kind of trying to figure out what is going on and put the pieces together and figure out exactly what is going on and the one's wife is like going to this treatment center to stop smoking because like they put they, they have an amazing job of putting these cigarettes all over the house and she's like Ugh, talking through that thing and goes to this facility to try and like stop smoking and it's like this crazy treatment that she goes through. It's such a strange, weird movie. As on here, you know, a brand new HD transfer of this. Um, you know, new interviews with Tom Savini, behind the scenes footage, deleted scenes, and has, you know, reversible sleeve with the original artwork for the movie as well. But um, I don't know, it's a, it's a cool, fun, strange movie, like I said, that I had never heard of in my life. The next one is a pretty cool slasher movie. Uh, this one has the you know original artwork as well. And this is you know Splatter University. I always really liked the original artwork though. Um, I think I, I, I like the new one as well a lot. But the original one's always one, the one I remembered. You know when it was out on DVD and I first saw this. Um, you know, at Spider University, like I said, and it's basically this new teacher who comes to a school, this start teaching at this school, and people kind of start getting killed off there, and there's, the kill sequences are really ridiculous and funny in this, and it's another one, too, that's kind of done more comical, and it's, I remember, too, like, looking into, about this, how they didn't shoot enough of the movie, so they had to kind of film out these kind of extending scenes of kind of the kids walk around campus, and you kind of tell, like, they had to, they filmed a couple things that kind of go on and it's at this Catholic school too and the and the there's something really strange about the the head priest of the school and I don't know it's just like all kinds of weird quirky humor in this movie it's just it's just a strange like lesser seen slasher film that I really like and you know the director of this it was one of the co-directors on um, you know Class of Newcomb High with Louis Kaufman and this has you know a brand new 2K transfer of this movie restored tra soundtrack uh, commentary the director but I would highly recommend this one both of these like I said are region free releases and the next one from the Criterion Collection is The Bro. This is, you know, a Blu-ray release. Uh, I haven't seen this one in a really long time. It's a David Cronenberg movie. And this, you know, a brand new 2K transfer on this. It has some cool features on here as well. You know, um, there was old interviews that were like with the one actor on, I think it was the Mike Douglas show. Is that what it was? One of the talk shows in the 70s. No, the Merv Griffith show, you know, and it was kind of a cool thing, you know, to see them talking about it. Because um, I always like when you, because those are the kind of things you really can't find anywhere else. But the movie's basically about this woman who's at this kind of treatment center that's kind of a head of its time kind of weird thing where they kind of, she's, something's really wrong with her. And they talk to people there, like, you know, like their kids and like get to the bottom of their troubles. And the one guy kind of like breaks out into a rash. And it's, it's a very strange movie. And, you know, the, the guys they're taking home, taking care of his daughter, and then people start strange. The daughter starts to kind of see these strange, like little kind of people, kind of lurking around, and weird things start to go on. And it's pretty much kind of like the husband trying to investigate the place and the doctor and that whole building, and trying to figure out what is with this place because it's very weird, weird things going on there, and there's the weird things that happen that people have gone there and things like that. Uh, it's it's I, I like the movie. It didn't hold up to me as good as I remember it when I first saw it a long time ago. Like I wasn't as into it as I was the first time around, but it still is a pretty cool movie. Uh, the next one, and I'm actually filming this update later than I normally would because I actually wanted to watch this. Um, so it's 5.40 in the morning, so I was up late, super late doing this because I wanted to see this one. And this is from Vinegar Syndrome, and it's a new one. This is another one I had never seen before, and it's a really pretty cool one. Like, it, it has some rocky aspects in the movie, but the beginning and, like, the end are really cool. And this is called Frightmare, and it also has an alternate title to it that it was called the, um, the other title was called the, the Horror Star. So that was, like, the other release title of the movie. 
I, I, I like the artwork on the Horror Star one, but this is basically about this kind of aging, um, you know, film star who played like a kind of a, kind of like a knockoff of Bela Lugosi kind of guy. You know what I mean? Like he did like kind of other vampire and kind of cheesier vampire movies and he's kind of about to die and he's not and he's really really sick and he's kind of killed people in the past too like he's kind of a weird person and it's this these film students are kind of celebrating his life and it's kind of right before the guy like goes on stage to kind of get this so kind of talk to the students about his career and he's like real happy that they're talking to him because he thought everyone kind of forgot about him he goes out there passes out nearly dies and then you know, he ends up dying right afterwards when he goes home, and the students end up going to the mausoleum where he's, you know, been put in there and kidnap his body and take it back to their house, and and it's all kind. Of, you know, this is one of the early early Jeffrey Combs movies, and, um, and then like the the wife kind of calls like a you know the spirits and things like that to try and figure out where his body is and of course that awakens him so then he goes and starts killing off the kids in the house and his wife says bring him back to hell with you and it's a it's a re really crazy weird movie i really like it it's it's very very strange it has a new 2k transfer on here it has interviews with the cinematographer um you know the hysterical continues commentary track um and then, you know this is a region free release as well but i don't know i i, I really like the stuff vinegar cinder puts out they put out some you know interesting stuff and i feel like stuff that's like some of it's really forgotten and you and it's cool too that to get these kind of movies on blu-ray uh the next one from anchor bay is the jake joan hall movie uh south paul which is one that i was you know interested in seeing and the movies basically is a you know jake joan hall is a boxer who's you know, really getting pretty popular and, you know, having specials and things like that and, you know, really, you know, pretty big, but he's got like some anger issues and things like that. And the one event, this fight ends up happening, the, a gun gets pulled and the, his wife ends up getting shot and dies. And it kind of really messes him up and his life goes into a wreck and his daughter ends up getting taken away by, you know, social services. And it's kind of about him trying to get back and try and figure out how he's going to get his daughter back and try and get back into the ring and but the problem is the anger issues and people don't really want to work with him and it's kind of him trying to prove himself that he can get back and it's kind of all that kind of stuff it's kind of a sad movie you know Rachel McAdams plays his wife who ends up you know getting killed but it has on here you know deleted scenes and a making of and a Q&A but it's a pretty cool movie you know like a you know character piece and it, I thought Jake Gyllenhaal did a good job uh the next one this is going to be you know, an exclusive Blu-ray release when this comes out, only at Best Buy uh, release, if you want the Blu-ray release. And this is Some Kind of of, of Hate, and it's, you know, stars um, Spencer Breslin, who I, for some reason I didn't even realize till now is Abigail Breslin's older brother, and, you know, Grace Phillips, and like I said, this is Some Kind of Hate. This is a very, very cool movie. This is, and, and I actually really was surprised with how much I like this. And it's about a group of these, um, this one kid who ends up getting sent to a, kind of a, he gets in a fight at school and ends up hurting this kid because, you know, the kids are always picking on him. He finally goes to defend himself and he's getting put in this facility where it's like out in the middle of like kind of like the desert and it's a bunch of other kids there who've got like anger issues and all kinds of different issues and he gets put out there with all these kids and it's kind of like, not like, kind of like almost like a juvie kind of thing, but not when the, the, the guy is kind of like trying to teach them through their issues and teach them other ways to get along and things like that. But of course he gets out there and immediately starts getting picked on by other kids there and they heard about him getting in these fights with this kid and what he did. So all the kids kind of try and rile him up, especially this certain group, try and rile him up because they want him to fight him and they want him to, just to basically see how crazy and nuts this guy can get. And he gets really upset about the whole thing and kind of says he wishes they were all dead. And by doing that, he finds out that there was this girl that was there who ended up killing herself because of the same thing. She was really depressed, and she comes back and starts to kill people off one by one. But she kills them by like cutting her wrists, and she cuts herself, and then the kids end up getting the cuts on them. I don't know. I really like this. Um, Grace Phillips. I think she was in a couple of different things. She's in that one Tales of Halloween, but she's in this movie. I don't know, I thought this was actually a pretty good one. It didn't bore me. Like, some of these kind of movies that are like this kind of vibe movie can work. This, to me, worked a lot better than a lot of these kind of movies. I would definitely recommend picking that one up. This one is my like, one of my favorite things I've seen. I, and like, I know it's not perfect on, like, every standpoint or anything, but I had the most fun with this movie than I've had with a movie in a long time. Because some movies are trying my patience to sit through them, to be honest. This movie I loved. And this is called The Sand. 
Uh, and it's a movie, too, that, like, you know, people go on and on about Sharknado and things like that. This, to me, is far better and far more fun than that, those movies. And this one, like I said, is called The Sand, and it's about these kids who go to this party one night on the beach, and they're all kind of going crazy and things like that. And you see the one kid end up bringing, like, this weird kind of, like, thing, like, almost looks like a gigantic, like, what is this thing? Looks like something, like an alien thing. He's messing around with it. He brings it up in the video, and like, because they're filming it kind of found footage in the beginning, then it becomes regular. But, you know, he puts this thing there, and all the kids kind of wake up in the morning um, the next day on the beach, and then they discover that this, if you touch the sand, it eats you. There's something with the sand. It's kind of like the, the raft scene in, uh, in uh, Creepshow 2, but like, like that all in the sand. And the one guy who gets stuck in the trash can was amazing. He, um, I think his name was... Um, I can't, I can't remember what his, his, his name was, but he was, like, the best person in this whole movie. Like, I, he totally steals the show, but he gets stuck in the trash in the whole movie. He's, like, yelling about needing food and wanting to get out of there. I loved his character, but it's basically, though, these people getting trapped on there, trying to figure out how they're going to get out of this situation that they're in. Jamie Kennedy comes in there as kind of, like, the bumbling, foolish guy, um you know, the beach patrol. I don't know. I love this movie. I, I give this like a top recommendation, a seriously fun movie. Like I'm telling you, like I watch so many different things as you guys know. And like I said, some movies are so trying to me to get through them. And I'm like, oh, this I love. Like this is like one of those movies I could watch, you could watch immediately again. It was just such a fun movie. Um, everything about this I liked. I mean, seriously, everything about this and the, the whole vibe of this movie was amazing to me. Uh, the next one... Uh, from Epic Pictures, oh yeah, and that's from Monarch Films, uh, is um, Old 37, this is from Epic Pictures, who, you know, just released uh, Tales from Halloween, which I can't, hopefully that comes out to DVD or Blu-ray soon, because I'll probably watch it on demand or something too, because I really want to see that, but this is, you know, stars Kane Holder, Kane Hodder, Bill Mosley, you know, Miley Cyrus's steps, I mean, half-sister Brandy Cyrus, and, you know, Lloyd Kaufman has a cameo on this as well, and this is basically about these two brothers that go around and intersect, you know, um, uh, calls of ambulances and things like that, and they end up picking up the people and kind of torturing them and killing them. And it's about a group of these kids who um, end up kind of messing around because they, they believe that they did something to their mother and the, the brothers, and so they kind of, like, take, you know, thing after getting these certain group of kids and it's that's essentially what it is it's just kind of these you know, their characters kind of going after them and you seeing what they do to these people and the torturing them and i don't it's it's a fun strange movie uh for some reason i don't know why the director took his name off the movie and then you know it's supposed to credit care you know credit as alan smitty like i didn't see anything wrong with it i don't know why he did that to be honest i i liked it what it was I don't even know if the director did anything else or not. Like, I don't know if, if he did, like, other movies or anything, because, like, I, I I think I tried to look it up and couldn't even figure it out. But it has on here, you know, um, interviews, a commentary track with the producer. But it's, I like it, and, like, the kids trying to, like, survive and get away from these, you know, their characters. I always love Kane Holder and, Holder and Bill Mosley. And the next one from uh, Cynodyme is The Falling. This is another one, which is my, one of my top recommendations, this update. This stars, you know, Maisie Williams, Maisie Williams you know, from Game of Thrones. She's also in some of those Teens React videos on YouTube. Um, but the movies basically, though, was one of the like, movies that I, I, I like these kind of movies, especially when they're done good. You know, it's a very, very art film, arty film and everything like that. But the director, she did an amazing job on this movie, especially the music. The music in this is great. But it's basically about uh, these, these two girls that are at a kind of private school, private girl school in the 60s. And the one girl, like, faints all of a sudden. Something happens. She ends up dying right afterwards, you know, very soon after. And then right after, Maisie Williams' character ends up starting to faint. And then other girls around the school start little by little fainting like this group. And then it gets to be like everybody. And then the school is kind of looking at her like, what are you doing? Are you egging these girls on to doing this? And they kind of want her out of the school. And they're all kind of trying to figure out what in the hell is going on and why this is happening. You know, and this is not ruining anything it's really you discover very early on that it's deals with kind of like their this their sexual awakening and the sexual awakening and any sexual thoughts and things like that kind of trigger these to happen and you see the teacher which is obviously into one of the girls and like you see her like fainting and it's a 
really, it kind of has a Heavenly Creatures vibe to it. I always really liked Heavenly Creatures, you know, one of Peter Jackson's early films, which is kind of less sort of talked about movie of his. And this kind of has that Heavenly Creatures kind of vibe to it. And there was another school movie too, girls' school movie, that was kind of like this a little bit. But I would definitely recommend you guys check this out. It, but like I said, it's an arty film. Not everyone will like it. But I really thought it was very effective. I definitely look forward to seeing the director's other movies she does in the future. Uh, the next one from Warner Brothers is Hidden, you know, Alexander Skarsgård film that he stars in. And this was okay. It's basically, you know me, I love Blast from the Past, so I like movies like in Fallout Shelters and things like that. And this is, you know, him and his family down this Fallout Shelter. And it's kind of like you start to just figure out exactly why they were got, you know, down there, what ended up happening. And they're always kind of paranoid about the... The daughter's always praying about, is it locked? Is the thing up above so no one can get in and things like that? And then things start to happen in there. They start to hear things above. Uh, things start, to, food starts going missing and they're not sure if it's an animal or if the creatures or whatever it is is above is kind of, you know, coming down and getting it somehow. They don't kind of, they don't really know what's going on. And they're kind of running out of food. And that's essentially what it is, is that that's pretty much the story and figuring out kind of what's going on with them. I thought, like I said, it was okay, but nothing like really that special to me. Uh, the next one from um, Warner Brothers as well is a Cartoon Network show. This is Mike Tyson's Mysterious, uh, Mike Tyson's Mystery Season 1 Uncensored. And this is pretty much like a Scooby-Doo style show starring Mike Tyson, you know, doing the voice, you know, playing himself in this. But kind of a, you know, it's basically just done in the real old school animation style, just like Scooby-Doo. It's a fun thing. It's, it's him and his friends, like it's like this bird and ghost character going around and try, like, kind of just solving mysteries and things like that and kind of issues and things like that. It's it's really ridiculous, but it's a really fun time. Like I said, it's all uncensored. It has all uh, 10 episodes of the show on on here. I really like this. If you like kind of throwback kind of shows to Scooby-Doo, I would definitely check this out. Uh, the next one from Image is Uncanny. This stars <clears throat> Mark, Webber, Mark Webber. And I didn't even realize it was him at first because I'm so used to him having like a beard lately and things. You know, I always think of him from, um, you know, storytelling as Scooby in that movie. It was a great Todd Sondes movie. And this movie is, it kind of like has the misfortune of kind of coming out after Ex Machima. So I kind of like is like a similar kind of vibe movie, and it's basically about this uh, reporter, well, you know, writer ends up going to this meeting this the scientist and to basically meet and kind of talk about his creations and things like that, and. He comes, she comes to find out that this person that she meets there is actually a robot, like a, you know, thinking robot, and she's kind of was fooled by him. Like I said, it's got a similar vibe to Ex Machina, and it's kind of, the two of them, though, kind of start to like each other, and there's kind of this jealousy with the robot, and all the kind of things that start to happen, and like the issues and things start to get worse and worse and things like that. I, like I said, I thought it was actually a pretty decent sci-fi movie. Um, you know, for what it was, but it had that kind of the misfortune, though, of kind of being a similar kind of movie to Ex Machina, which was, I thought, a better movie, though. Uh, the next one from um, Art Sportation Films is um, Bloody, Knuckle, Bloody Knuckles, and it's, um, this is actually a pretty cool movie, and the director is, you know, a real fan of, like, you know, 70s, 80s horror films and things like that. It even has on here a featurette with him going to the headquarters of Diabolical DVD, you know, Diabolic DVD and showing, like, the, where they, you know, because, like, that's a really popular site for uh, cult films and it sells DVDs and Blu-rays, and he actually goes inside the guy's house and kind of shows the place. But this is basically about this cartoonist who does kind of um, political and all kinds of different kind of spoofy kind of cartoons and comic books and things like that, and one of his comic books ends up falling into the wrong hands and because he's drawing one of this kind of mafia kind of guy who has these chemicals that he makes and he ends up, the, his henchmen end up finding the, this thing and cutting off the guy's hand and you know because they're angry about what he's done and they don't want him to be able to draw and to write these comics anymore and in his hand you know ends up coming back to life and kind of going on a spree of trying to get revenge. It's kind of like idle hands a little bit and a little bit like Quick Zero Highway at the hand kind of coming back to life. And it has on here, you know, director's commentary, deleted scenes, and featurettes, like I said, to the thing going to the uh, location. And the last one from you know, Impulse Pictures, and, you know, th this is a really strange adult film called The Farmer's Daughter, and I just covered this in case someone said something. But it's, I, you know, I always think of 
you know, The Pig Keeper's Daughter, which was that Harry Novak movie. But that was, like, not... Uh, it was pretty much R-rated. This is more of a hardcore kind of thing. But and it was... It's a very strange porno. It's kind of a porno mixed with, like, a Last House on the Left kind of movie. And it's got stuff in it that, like... I didn't even know it was kind of a big at the time. I didn't really know people... I'm not going to talk about the details, but I didn't even know that they were doing that in adult films at this time. Because it was from 1976... You know, so I guess it's ahead of its time, but it's kind of these girls, and they kind of are like sleeping with this really guy, like weird guy, and and they say like you're not gonna do this, and they kind of that's really strange. And then these criminals come in and kind of go after them because they're kind of getting their revenge on them, what they did to the guy. Like you know, it's really strange. Like I said, it's got that last house left kind of vibe to it, and really strange things going on, but looks really good. And I don't know, it's a, it's a really really strange one. But anyway, though, guys, thanks again for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.